The power of prayer cannot be underestimated. Look at look at what look at what Paul says in Ephesians chapter three. We studied this not long ago in our Bible study on Sunday mornings, but Ephesians chapter three and verse twenty. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Paul says, let it be so, or amen. So Paul is saying that God is more powerful than anything that you or I could imagine. Sometimes we try to limit God's ability and his strength. Now, there, there have been times where we have prayed for someone and God has done far more for that individual. Uh, I guess probably, um, I don't know, less than a year ago, a few months, several months ago, uh, my cousin had a, had a baby that had some uh, problems and, and I just, I just really quite frankly, I didn't think that, I didn't think the baby was going to survive. And, but we continued to pray that God would, would work in that family's life and in that child's life and with the doctors at the hospital that were overseeing the baby. And you know, today, that baby is perfectly healthy and perfectly normal. Now, you can say what you will about that, but even the doctors at Children's Hospital do not understand fully why, why my cousin's child had such a wonderful recovery from his problems. So I think sometimes we underestimate. We try to limit God to our human abilities. And his abilities are far above ours. God will always do what is best for us. Even, even when we don't always realize it. That's the thing. Sometimes we don't realize what's best for us. We see a limited amount. We see our lives. And we see a very limited scope. If you ever have tried looking at a photograph or a painting, take a painting, for example. If you have ever tried taking a painting and you look at it through a, um, oh shucks, what's it called? Magnifying glass. It magnifies details in one area of that painting. Our lives are like that. Our personal lives as individuals are often one little area on a broader canvas. And we look at our little area through a magnifying glass and the details are so, so sharp and so distinct that we forget that there's an entire canvas out there. And so sometimes when God looks at the entire picture, seeing all of the details through his lenses, sometimes there are things that we miss because we are so focused on our part of the picture. But let's remember, whatever God does, it is for us. And it is the best for us. James chapter 1 and verse 17. James 1 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom... There is no variation or shadow due to change. I want you to remember that. Job, when he was going through his trials and tribulations, as he records in the book of Job, I'm sure that Job did not think that God was doing what was best for him. But the truth is, Job came out of his trials and tribulations a much stronger individual for having gone through them. While we're in the book of James, chapter 5, and in the bottom part of verse 16, chapter 5, bottom part of verse 16 through 18, James says this, The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Job, or Job, James says, do not underestimate God and the power of prayer. 
Also, it's important for us to realize as we pray, whether it's in worship service or whether it's as individuals, we need to pray, but then we need to take action on that. Sometimes we pray for God to comfort and console those who are sick, those who are in nursing homes. But guys, let me ask you, do we ever do anything ourselves? Or do we just ask God to simply comfort Georgie Dye as she's in the nursing home on the west side? Now, Georgie's got dementia. She's not going to know who, who any of us are. We might go to visit her and she's never going to know it. But do we actually take action? Sometimes I think it's easy for us to pray and then leave it in God's hands and do nothing ourselves. But maybe God's answer is for us to actually take action ourselves. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Matthew 15, verse 7 says, You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines of teaching his doctrines, the commandments of men. Jesus' point in this passage and how it ties into prayer is if we only praise God with our voices in prayer during worship assembly, but we don't praise him every day of our lives, we're no better off than those scribes and Pharisees, the teachers of the law of Jesus' day. You know, here's an example. We can pray for a good corn crop, but unless we actually plant the corn, do you think God is going to give us a good corn crop? It's just not going to happen. We've got to meet God. We've got, if we expect him to answer our prayers the way we want them answered, we've got to roll up our sleeves. We've got to get busy. Here's an interesting point I think sometimes that we forget. It's so easy for us to get into a a routine or a rut, if you will, with our prayers. This is something I've struggled against personally because I'm a creature of habit. Oftentimes I will pray the same prayer over and over or the same basic prayer might add to it or shorten it a little bit. But prayer comes from the heart. Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 5. When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have the reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. Obviously, Jesus is talking about a personal prayer here and not something that we pray and worship. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. But I want you to notice something. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask them. Jesus wants us to pray simply. A prayer does not have to be long or short. The length of a prayer does not matter. What matters to God is that we set sincerity within our hearts. How we pray, making sure it is from the heart. It's important to God that we pay attention, that we don't be like the Gentiles here who just mound up words. The Gentiles of Jesus' day, they prayed in what was known of at that period of time, and I think the King James refers to it, in a repetitious manner, over and over. In a, their prayers were almost a chant. The same thing over and over and over again. That's not coming from the heart. God already knows what we need. He already knows what is in our heart. But he does want us to express that. Romans chapter 8. If you'll look back there for a moment. Romans chapter 8 and in verse 26 of Romans chapter 8. Consider what Paul says here. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us 
with groanings too deep for words. There are times in our lives where we will be so, maybe so happy or maybe so sad, but our emotions will be so full that we cannot find the words. That does not mean that we can't go to God in complete silence and just say, Lord, hear my prayer. God knows, but he still wants us to come to him. As I said, it's not the length that counts. When I pray at work or in my everyday life, it's kind of like a phone call. to someone who I know hears and understands. It's like having a best friend on the other end of the telephone that's just there to listen and to know that they hear and will do what is best for me. In Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 11, the Apostle Paul writes to the Christians at Ephesus this. Paul says, This was according to the eternal purpose that he realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. You know, Paul was suffering a great deal. And I'm sure the Christians at Ephesus were praying for him. And he said, we have access with confidence through our faith. We have access to God through prayer. He says, don't lose heart. Don't give up because you're not getting the answers that you want. My part.